This model has been designed and manufactured in the UK by EcoStyle for the Yorkshire Flood Resilience Project. Welcome to Riverview. This street, like many around the UK, has a significant risk of flooding. Here we can see number one and number two Riverview. To help reduce the risk of flood damage to their property, the residents at number one have installed property flood resilience, and they've also taken steps to make the drainage more sustainable in their garden too. We can see some of the measures installed at the back of the house here. The residents at number two, on the other hand, haven't taken any of these precautions. Like many homes in the UK at the moment, this one isn't resilient to flooding. Firstly, let's look around number two. We enter the property through a conventional front door. The inside of number two Riverview is like many houses in the UK at the moment. The floor is carpeted and the walls are covered with wallpaper. The sockets are low down near the floor. The television sits on a low stand. The sentimental items like family photographs are arranged downstairs too. Moving through into the kitchen, we can see that the units sit directly on the floor. The boiler's located downstairs too, as is the fuse box. What's more, if we look towards the door, there are very small gaps around the bottom and also where the air vents are in the wall. Although these might not be very visible in many homes, it only takes a tiny gap for water to enter. Looking upstairs, we also have the bedroom with a standard bedroom layout as we might expect in many homes. Next door to that, we have the bathroom. If we go outside, the residents have paved over their garden so that they can have a patio seating area outside. On the other hand, the residents at number one are aware of the flood risk in their area, so they've taken steps to prepare and have made their property flood resilient. The residents have had their mortar repointed to make sure there are no gaps or cracks that water could pass through. They've also kept an eye on the drains around their house. You can see how clear they've kept the roadside drains near their property. We enter the house through a flood door. This looks just like an ordinary door, except it has extra seals and locks around the edges that can be deployed in the event of a flood to reduce the amount of water able to seep under and around it. In the living room, a wide range of flood resilient adaptations have been made. For example, the walls here are painted. The house has a concrete floor covered by laminate flooring, which can easily be cleaned and dried should flood water get in. Rugs can add an extra homely touch and they can also be carried upstairs away from the flood water. Around the edges of the room, the skirting boards are made of UPVC, which is also easy to wipe clean. This grate in the floor leads to a sump pump a pump in a small chamber dug into the floor of the property at its lowest point. Any water that enters the property flows down through the grate and into the sump to be pumped outside to a safe location. The sockets in number one are positioned higher up on the walls, which can reduce the risk of flood damage to the electrical systems in the home. The television is mounted on the wall, which helps to raise it above the flood level. Valuable and sentimental items are also positioned higher up on the shelves. The kitchen units in number one are raised on legs and have removable kit pods that can be taken off and stored in a flood. This can make it easier for the kitchen units to dry out afterwards. Materials such as stainless steel, plastic and solid wood can be good options for flood resilient kitchens. And many designs also have removable drawers so that their contents and the drawers themselves can easily be moved above the flood level. The kitchen floor is tiled, 
which is also easy to clean and dry. Also, the fuse box is raised high up on the wall, further helping to reduce the risk of flood damage to the electrical systems. Now let's move upstairs. We can see that the bedroom in number one, compared to next door, has a few extra flood resilient features. We can see that the residents have stored valuable and sentimental items on the upstairs floor of the house, on the shelves here, so that they're well above the likely flood level. They've also stored important documents, like insurance details, in a sealed box upstairs to protect them from flood water. The boilers upstairs too, because these can be extremely expensive to replace if they're damaged by flood water. Leaning in the corner of the bedroom is another wooden internal door. This has actually come from the living room downstairs. The door is hung on rising butt hinges, which allow it to be easily lifted off the hinges and carried upstairs, away from the flood water. The doors can then be rehung after the water subsided, rather than needing to replace them. The bathroom looks very similar to the one next door, although in the internal plumbing, there are a few important differences. The residents at number one have had non-return valves installed. If flood water overwhelms the sewers and causes the flow to reverse, the non-return valves will close, which stops sewer water backing up out of the toilet and other plumbed in appliances. Outside, the residents at number one have a very different garden to their neighbours. Near the house, there's a water butt, which stores water flowing from the roof down the downpipe. This can help to reduce runoff over the surface, and it can also be used for water in the garden or washing cars. Most of the garden is covered by grass, which helps with natural drainage. Where paving has been used, they've used a permeable variety so that water can pass through it to infiltrate into the soil underneath. The garden is full of plants, which also help to slow the flow of runoff over the surface and intercept rain as it falls. On the wastewater pipes running from the appliances in the kitchen, non-return valves have been installed, again helping to reduce the risk of sewer water backing up into the house. On the back door, the residents have installed a flood barrier. This forms a watertight seal around the lower part of the door to reduce or delay water entry through it. The residents have also had their air bricks and vents replaced with self-closing ones, which have flaps or valves that close automatically as the water levels rise up to them. Now we've explored these two houses, let's see what happens when the area floods. The flood water is rising quickly on the street, and in number two, which has no PFR measures, it's seeping under the door. Water's flowing in through the vents and air bricks too, straight into the living room. We can see it spreading across the carpet and rising up the walls. The carpet, the wallpaper, and even the plasterboard will be soaked and it will need to be stripped out afterwards. The water's getting higher still, creeping up the furniture. The sockets are underwater, and now the television's going under too. The flood water's just lapping at the side table where family photographs and other sentimental items are. At the rear end of the house, as the flood water flows into the garden, it rises up the patio furniture. The entire garden is covered in concrete, so it can't help to absorb any of the water. The water's flowing under the back door and through the air bricks and vents into the kitchen, and the units are being gradually submerged. Kitchens are often one of the most expensive items in a home, so this will cost the residents at number two a lot to replace. The fuse box is on the kitchen wall too, near the floor, so this will also be underwater. As the water gets deeper, the garden furniture is starting to be washed away too. However, this amount of damage doesn't always have to be the case for properties at flood risk. Now let's see what happens when the flood water reaches number one, where the residents are prepared and they've installed property flood resilience measures. When the residents received a flood warning on their mobile phones, they move their car to higher ground.
Even though the water's rising on the street outside, the residents have locked their flood door, so it's helping to resist water entry. Little or no water will be coming through the walls either, because the residents have made sure that the mortar's been thoroughly repointed. The flood barrier, which the residents have installed on the back door, is helping to keep the water out too. And the self-closing air bricks have sealed up any gaps where water could pass through the ventilation points. Resistance measures like flood doors and barriers and self-closing air bricks are ideal for limiting or delaying water entry, but they can't be guaranteed to keep it out completely. A little leakage can be expected, but the resistance measures allow residents time to move their belongings upstairs or to a higher level away from the flood water. Resilient adaptations inside the home are therefore important too. Now, a little water has entered into number one through the flood door. There isn't as much water as there is next door because the resistance measures have helped to reduce this and it also took the water longer to get in. The laminate flooring is underwater, but the residents will be able to wipe this down and dry it easily when the water levels subsided. The sump pump will help to speed this up. The furniture is sitting above the water level because it's been raised on legs and the sockets in the television are well above the flood water too. Moving through into the kitchen, the water is just lapping at the bottom of the units because, like the furniture, they've also been raised. The fuse box, which is high up on the wall, is well above the flood level. You can also see a gap in the door frame between the living room and the kitchen. The door's been taken away. This has been lifted off its rising butt hinges and carried upstairs to safety. When the water levels subside, the residents will be able to put the door back in its place downstairs. The difference in how numbers one and two Riverview are affected by flooding shows the difference that property flood resilience can make in reducing the risk of flood damage to homes at risk of flooding. The residents at number one suffered much less interior damage than their neighbours, so it would be much quicker and cheaper for them to recover and to carry on their daily life as normal after flooding. If you live at flood risk, it's important to be prepared and to explore the steps that you could take to adapt your home or business.